Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I am thrilled to bring you a very exciting tutorial. The creative minds behind Procreate have just released their 2D animation app, Procreate Dreams, and I'll be your creative guide as you kickstart your animation journey. You can consider this tutorial as sort of a mini workshop where you can follow along and grasp the essential concepts to get started animating in Procreate Dreams. You'll learn to navigate around the interface, master gestures, and then we'll embark on a hands-on project where you'll learn the three key ways to animate using this app. Now, Procreate may be brand new, but I've been working in the app extensively for the past few months as a beta tester. In September, Procreate invited me to London to present a demo at the big keynote event where they unveiled Procreate Dreams to the world. With all that experience, I've picked up a ton of valuable insights about working in Procreate Dreams, lots of tips and tricks, and methods for creating fun and captivating animations that I'm excited to share with you. And if you like what you learn here, I do have a full Procreate Dreams course that is gonna be available on Artmakers Club and Skillshare. And we'll dive deep into the universe of Procreate Dreams animation while guiding you through several follow along projects. It's a lot of fun. But for now, grab your iPad, your Apple Pencil, make sure it's loaded up with the Procreate Dreams app, and let's get started. Procreate Dreams has just hit the scene as a standalone app available now on the App Store for a one-time payment of $19.99, which is an absolute bargain for what it offers. The app is supported by a wide range of iPad models, and you can find a full list of compatible iPads at procreate.com dreams. When you open up Procreate Dreams, you're gonna be in the theater. This is where all your movies are. Procreate, if you're familiar, has the gallery for artwork and Dreams has the theater for movies. We're gonna tap the plus sign in the upper right and this is how we start a new movie project. If you swipe up or down, we'll see we have these templates to choose from. We're gonna choose the widescreen version and then we're just gonna tap empty. I'll start by giving you a little tour of the interface. The Procreate interface is divided into three parts. Up here, we have the stage, then we have the toolbar in the middle, and down here is the timeline. So up here is the stage, and this white rectangle is the stage, and that's where your movie plays. So everything that is inside there is essentially in frame in your movie. But around the stage, we have the backstage. And this is the non-visible area around the stage for elements that are out of frame. And the other thing in our stage is the time code. We can tap that and we have some options to show our onion skins and set our background color. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Just want to let you know that that is there. All right, next is a toolbar. So the first thing over here on the left is these little rectangles. And this is how we exit back out to the theater. So while we're here in the theater, let's go ahead and give our movie that we're gonna make today a name. We're gonna tap hold, and this is gonna bring up a little popover, and we're gonna choose rename. And we're just gonna call this Happy Animating, because we're gonna do a little happy animating today, and we'll tap done. All right, let's get back in. Okay, so I had you name it for a reason because I wanted to show you right here the next thing is the name of your movie. And if you tap that, this is where we're gonna find our movie preferences. So starting at the top, we have our properties. So you could set things like frame per second, duration. Uh, for, for what we're gonna do today, I wanna make sure our frames per second is set to 24. And then let's set the duration of our movie to 15 seconds. So you just type in 15. There's some other options here under stage, timeline playback, um, and these are our share export options, but we'll show you that again at the end. Just wanna make sure you know all of this is here. So let's go ahead and tap done. And then over here on the right side, starting here, this is the play button. This little circle is performing mode, which we'll really get to know in this video. This is our timeline edit where we can select content to cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and group. And then this is the draw and paint mode, which I'll show you in just a minute. And then finally, we have our little plus sign, which is how we add tracks and content to our movie. And then down below, we have our timeline. So this is the area that will contain tracks and content. There's not a lot here, so let's go ahead and make something to animate. We're gonna tap this little squiggle to enter draw and paint mode. Procreate Dreams contains essentially the right-hand side of Procreate. So we've got our brushes with our different 
built-in brushes and brush library. You can also import your third-party brushes. We've got our smudge tool, eraser, we've got layers, and then we've got our color picker. Let's go ahead and pick a nice bright yellow in our color picker. And then let's go over to our brushes and we're gonna go into the drawing set and choose the Blackburn brush. And then I just quickly wanted to show you that in Procreate Dreams, you can draw anywhere inside or outside of the stage area, which is this little rectangle. So you can draw stuff out here, down here. Uh, you have a pretty big area that you can draw in. And this is great because you can draw really like wide drawings and then like scroll past like a camera movement and stuff like that, have stuff come into frame and it's really great. But let's go ahead and undo all that. So to undo, you can take two fingers and tap, tap, tap. And then of course, if you do need to redo, you can take three fingers and tap. Uh, or you can take two fingers and hold them down to continuously redo and go all the way back. And one really cool thing that I wanted to mention is that Procreate Dreams has eternal undo. So basically you can go back to the gallery view, you can quit your iPad, you can do whatever, um, get back in your project and you can still undo stuff, which is a really exciting feature. So let's go ahead and draw something that we're gonna animate. We're gonna be drawing little happy faces, little smiley faces since we're doing some happy animating today. So I'll go ahead and draw a circle in the middle of your canvas. Make sure you leave some room around it so it should be about that big. And as we do that, you'll notice now that something has popped up in our timeline area. This is a track and it's filled with content. Two important terms in Procreate Dreams. You can adjust the duration of your content by grabbing the edge and just dragging it back like that. And you see this grunt of gray, it's like a slightly lighter gray area. This is your track and this is the content. So the track fills the entire duration of your timeline and you can fill it with many pieces of content. So track is the container for content. Let's go ahead and drag this content back to fill it for the entire duration. You can notice you kind of go past your duration, but let's snap it, see that red line, snap it right there so it's the full duration of our movie. Now let's go to our colors and we'll grab black and we'll draw a little face. You can zoom in and out of your stage like that as you're drawing. And let's draw a cute little face. There we go. We're all done drawing. Let's exit out of draw and paint mode. You can either tap done here or you can tap the little squiggle symbol again. And now that we've drawn something, let's get to the fun part, animating. So there are three key ways to animate in Procreate Dreams. The first is frame by frame animation. And this is where you draw each frame of animation individually by hand. This is the oldest kind of animation. All the old Disney movies use it. If you've ever used a flip book, you know this type of animation. The next is animation by keyframing. In keyframing, you use points called keyframes to set the state of your subject or content. So like at this point in my timeline, I want it to be this. And at this point, I want it to be this. And the software smoothly transitions the content in between those two keyframes. And then the other way is animation by performing. This is such an innovative feature in Procreate Dreams. And it's probably the most exciting one for me. When you perform, your actions and movements are captured in real time as keyframes and it's great for creating natural organic movements. So we'll get to know all those three kinds of animation in this video. Since there's three methods of animating, let's create three smiley faces to animate. And we're just gonna duplicate what we've already drawn. So let me zoom back out. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. We're gonna tap and hold, and that's gonna bring up our content popover with some options here. You'll see duplicate, and if we were to press that, you'll see that this piece of content is duplicated right after it in the timeline, which is not exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that with two finger tap. And instead I'm gonna tap and hold, and then I'm gonna to go to track options. And then I'm gonna choose duplicate here. And this is gonna duplicate the whole track. So duplicate, and you can see that the whole track is duplicated with the exact same content that was in this one. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. We can tap, hold, track options, and choose duplicate. So now we have three. Let's move them into position so that we can see each of the three smiley faces. 
So we're going to tap our top track here and you'll notice we have this bounding box. That means that it's selected and it's ready to move. If it goes away like that, you can just tap it again and it comes back up and let's just scoot it over. So it's right there. And then we'll tap the bottom track down here. And for this one, I want to show you a cool feature because as you move it, if you put another finger on the screen, you enable snapping and you can move it in a straight line like that, which is really cool. Um, you can also like if I were to go to this middle track here for the middle happy face and I move it around, put a finger down, it'll snap to like the middle of my stage, which is pretty cool. So you can arrange your three smiley faces so that we're all ready to go. Now that we have some tracks in our timeline, I want to show you how to zoom around with gestures. So you've already kind of seen me do this a little bit, but you can pinch and spread to zoom in uniformly like that. If you take three fingers and move them horizontally left or right, this is going to adjust the time scale. So this is going to zoom in and this is going to like show you more time. So there's like my whole movie and this is like just one second of it. If you take three fingers and you go up and down, this is going to adjust the scale vertically. So it helps you make it a little bit easier to see your tracks. If you quick pinch, you can fit the entire movie onto the screen so you can see your whole timeline and all your tracks. If you double tap on a piece of content, it'll focus in on that content. You can keep double tapping until you get to max zoom. And then you can see we have individual frames so we can see the individual frames of our movie. But for now, let's go ahead and do a quick pinch to zoom all the way out. And then we'll take three fingers and go up so that way they're filling as much of the space as possible while seeing everything. So we're about to get to animating, but to make this a little bit easier, let's add a little color to our faces. So let's tap our top track here and we're going to go into our draw and paint mode. So tap the little squiggle and then we're going to go into our colors and I am going to choose pink. You can choose whatever colors you want for this, but I'm going to choose a pink and then I'm going to drag this circle and drop it onto this smiley face and that will turn the whole thing pink using color drop. And I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom track. So this little smiley face here, I'm going to do like an orange for this one, something like that, and then drag that and drop it on. And then we can even create a background color because why not? We love color. So let's tap our time code. And this is where we can find the option to set our background color of our movie. So tap background color and I'm going to choose just like a nice kind of like a navy blue kind of color. Let's go ahead and tap done. All right. So the first method that I'm going to teach you for animating and procreate dreams is using performing because it is my favorite method for animating and procreate dreams. Let's choose the track with the pink face. And then you might have noticed this already, but we have this little kind of red button kind of thing with a little clapboard symbol on it. And this is the playhead. You can move it back and forth to kind of skim through your movie and you can do a lot of other stuff with it too. So let's go ahead and move it back so it's at the beginning of the timeline. And then we're going to tap this little circle here to enter performing mode. And as you do that, you'll see that it changes to a little red square like it's recording and it also says ready here in the upper left. Now we're just going to move our pink circle around like this. Just move it around for like a couple seconds and then stop. And now if we take our playhead and scroll it back, you can already start to see a little animation, but go ahead and tap play. And you can see those movements that we just made are captured. I'm going to hit pause. Now I want to show you something else that's really important. Um, here under modify, go ahead and tap that. We have our motion filtering and motion filtering basically will smooth out your movements. The higher the number, the smoother the movements will be. So if I were to turn that up and then go back and watch that, it's going to look a little bit smoother. And then if I go back and turn it down all the way, it's going to look really like jerky and capture all the movements very accurately. <laughs> um, so for our purposes, let's go ahead and leave that at like 15% or so. I think that's a good balance. And then tap modify to get out of that. All right, let's perform some other things as well. So let's move the playhead until it's just after what we did already. And then let's do some other stuff. We can grab the corner, this little red node in the corner, and we can scale it up and down like that. Da, 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 da. 
We can um, do non-uniform scale, so basically squash and stretch by grabbing the top edge of the bounding box and doing that, or grabbing the side, doing that. We can also rotate it, and to rotate something, you're going to tap the corner node, and you'll see this little, um, this little curved kind of gray thing. Uh, I call it the noodle. <laughs> it's not the technical term, but that's what I like to call it. Grab the little noodle, so you tap it, and then you can spin around it will capture all those movements so we'll keep spinning until basically we get to the end of the timeline and if we wanted to play this whole thing back we can take our playhead and just flick it all the way over and it will go to the beginning and then play the whole movie through so we can see all those different movements that we created through performing so there's squishing and spinning and it's awesome but that is not all that you can do with performing. So let's move our playhead back to the beginning. And you wanna make sure that you see the little clapboard. Um, if you have it down here a little bit, it might turn into this transformation symbol, but move it up so that it's on the content and it's a little clapboard. And then we're gonna tap it and we're gonna choose filter. And let's start with opacity. And this is really cool because it's going to record our movements as we change the opacity like that. So I was just moving it back and forth and now you can see it's fading in and out. Um, let's do another one. We'll tap the little clapboard and go to filter and let's do blur and we can blur it, Woo, blurring it. Um, we can do a different one. Let's do HSB, which is really fun because it'll like cycle through colors. So you can perform these live filters right over the top of all the other movements that we already made, which is really cool. So you might notice down here under our content, we've got all these kind of gray tracks with red symbols in them. These are keyframe tracks. And this is how perform works. It automatically creates keyframes for each of the movements or adjustments that we made in real time. And if you're not familiar with keyframes, Let's talk about it as we explore the next way to animate and procreate dreams, keyframing. Keyframes smoothly blend from one state to another, so they're great for creating precise animations. Let's go down here and select the track with the yellow face. And we're going to move the playhead to the beginning and then zoom in until we have only like a couple seconds visible. So you can see I have zero, one, two seconds. And we want to make sure that we get out of the performing mode. So just tap to exit, or you can tap done down here either way. So make sure that's not active anymore. And then we're going to move our playhead down a little bit like that. Tap the playhead, tap move, and then we're going to tap move and scale. And as we do that, you'll see we have a keyframe track that has now appeared with two keyframes in it. So you can see the two right there. If we move the playhead over one of these, it'll turn white, and that's how you know that the keyframe is selected. So let's set the different states for these two keyframes. So for this one, now I'm in the, the first keyframe here, it's white. I'm gonna move my little face to the top of my stage, and then I'll slide on over to this keyframe, make sure it's white, and slide that down like that. And now if we hit play, we see our face moving from this position to this position. Very smooth, very precise. And another thing you might notice is now that we're zoomed into the timeline, the playback is just going from this point to this point. It's just kind of repeating. So that's a cool way to just kind of like focus in on a certain amount of animation and just kind of like see how it's doing. So you can also grab your keyframe and drag it this way. And that will, of course, make the motion happen faster because it's less time to get from this point to this point. So that would be really fast. Um, but let's go ahead and leave it right there. And another thing that you might notice is the motion is kind of like it starts out a little slow, it speeds up, and then it slows down at the bottom. And this is kind of the rate at which the motion is happening, and that's called easing. So it's kind of like easing in and then easing out and you can adjust your easing. So let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna hit pause. And then you're gonna tap and hold the keyframe track. So not the content, but the keyframe track down here. That's gonna pull up this menu. And we're gonna go to set all easings. And we've got some options here. 
Let's go ahead and start by choosing linear. And now we'll play. And you'll see that now it's moving at a consistent rate from start to finish. It's not like slowing down or anything like that. So that's linear. And I'll just kind of explain the other ones. So under easings, we have linear. Ease in will start out slow. Ease out will finish slow. And then ease in and out will start and finish slow, which is what we started to begin with. But we're going to stick with linear. So let's modify the keyframes because all keyframes you can modify, which is wonderful. Um, so let's start by, we'll tap this one. You have some options here, but don't worry about that for now because I want to make it, I want to make this go totally off the stage. So I'll drag that down and then I'll tap over to this keyframe and then I'll drag that above. So now it's going completely off stage and back down. And this kind of reminds me of, I don't know, like as it's repeating, um, like a slot machine or something, like it's spinning around and around rotating. So let's kind of lean into that and I'll show you how you can duplicate some movements. So let's hit pause. And then we're gonna take the playhead and drag it to like just after this keyframe. So up here, make sure you have the little clap clapboard, tap it and then choose edit and then choose split. And now we've split our content into two pieces and we're going to delete this second one. So we're going to tap and hold and choose delete content. So now we just have this one. And now we're going to duplicate that because I kind of want that to just keep happening again throughout my timeline. So we'll zoom out a little and then we're going to tap and hold this content and choose duplicate. And we'll do that a couple times. Tap, hold, duplicate. We'll do it one more time. And every time we do that, it just places it next to it on the timeline. So there we go. So now it looks something like this. And I think this effect looks cooler um, when you're in full screen mode and you can't see it like go behind, go backstage. So I'll show you how to do that. To get to full screen playback, you take four fingers and tap them. So I like to use these four, my pinky, ring finger, middle finger, and my thumb and just do that. And there we go. Now it's like cycling through again and again, which I think looks kind of cool. And then we can tap again with four fingers to get out. You can also um, tap and choose back. And then you have some play options and you can scrub through with one finger. So full screen playback is awesome. I use that a lot. Let's go ahead and hit back. So on this last copy here, I'm going to actually, I'm going to zoom all the way out and then I'm going to drag this drag the end so it fully fills up the rest of the timeline. And then I'm going to move the playhead so it's just past my keyframe track, OK? Because I want to show you something. So if I'm here in the timeline and I want to move this back up here, you'll notice that I can't. I'll try and move it and we'll just snap back into position. And that's because we have this keyframe that's saying like, hey, this is this is where I am right now. And you can't move me unless you were to add another keyframe. So if we move our playhead down here and it changes into the kind of transform symbol, now we can tap and we can add another keyframe. We can move it. We can tap, add another keyframe, move it that way. You know, you can do whatever you want and set these keyframes like that. There we go. But you can't move something unless once you've set keyframes for move, you can't move it without setting a keyframe. So now say you wanted to just start from scratch. You want to get rid of all these keyframes. You can do that really easily. You just tap and hold on the keyframe track anywhere that's like gray, not on one of the little icons. Tap and hold and then choose delete transform. And that will clear out all of those keyframes. And you can start again. So now, because I don't have any keyframes, I can move that, put it back into position. So let's do something else a little bit fun. We're going to move our playhead to about right there, tap it, go to move. And this time, let's do warp. But, or warp is really fun. So we're, we're on this keyframe. So let's zoom in. And we have all these different nodes. And you can basically drag them and kind of like fold it up, <laughs> almost like it's a little burrito. Um, you can see now it's kind of like squishing. Uh, you could maybe we'll grab this other one and pull it. There's some really fun things that you can do with warp, but we'll just kind of play around with it for now. Um, another thing that you could do is I'm going to go all the way to the end of the timeline now, and I'm going to 
push it up into the content so I get my little clapboard. Tap it, choose move, and we're gonna go to move and scale because I'm gonna make this rotate. So we did rotate as a perform, but I'm gonna show you manual keyframing. We gotta be able to tap that. So we're gonna push our, push our playhead up so we can tap this. And then we're gonna type a number in to rotate like uh, 360 degrees. And that will do one full rotation. And if we were to hit play, there it is, slowly <laughs> moving around to do a full rotation. It's kind of boring. Um, so let's tap it again. And as long as you type in like multiples of 360, it will do like full rotations. So if I type in um, 1800, which is a multiple of 360, now it will spin a lot faster, which is kind of cool. And if I were to tap into here and hit minus, it will spin the other way, which is kind of cool. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so that is manual keyframing. And then there's a lot more that you can do with manual keyframing, but I think that's a good place to get you started. And the last way that I wanna show you how to create animation in Procreate Dreams is frame by frame animation. So let's zoom in here on our orange face. And we're actually going to create our frame by frame animation on a track above the face. So let's tap the orange track, the orange face track. And then we're gonna go over here to the plus sign and we're gonna tap content track. So this is gonna create a empty content track. You see here. So now it's empty and ready to fill up with some frames. So we're gonna move our playhead all the way to the beginning. And then of course, since we have to draw these frames, we're gonna go into our draw and paint mode. So tap little squiggle. And then we have this little handle in the middle that will appear once we're in draw and paint mode. And you're just gonna grab that and drag it down. Just kind of flick it down and that's gonna put you into flipbook mode. And these little squares or rectangles are the different frames in your animation. So you kind of see our other stuff moving around as we scroll through. But let's go all the way to the first one. And then we'll zoom on in um, to our face here. And we still have orange selected, which is great. I'm just gonna draw some dots evenly around my little orange face. And I'm trying to make these like bursting lines coming out of it almost like sun rays. So now I'm gonna tap over to the next rectangle and this is the next frame in my movie. And let's make things a little bit easier so that we can see what we're doing uh, when we make our next frame in animation by enabling onion skins. We're gonna tap the time code down here and you'll see there's an option to show onion skins. Onion skins show you a preview of your previous or next frame in animation that you can use as a guide to draw the current frame. And there's some options here. You can go to edit onion skins, you can reduce the opacity, you can change the color. I like to keep the opacity down a little bit just so it's easier to see. And now we can start drawing our next frame of animation. So I'm just gonna draw from those little dots, a little bit longer lines and then go to the next frame and make them a little bit longer all the way around. Go to my next frame and start making them even longer, a little thicker if you want. Just kind of growing these lines out a little bit at a time. And then once you get them as long as you want them to be, we'll start kind of tapering them off. So let's do that next. So on the next frame, now I'm gonna start drawing, not quite here, but a little bit out from that point. because The lines are gonna start going out. And then I'm gonna keep making them a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter on each frame. Maybe one more after this. And for this last frame, I'll just do like little tiny dots. There we go. Okay, so now we can swipe through and we kind of get a little preview of our animation. But if we wanted to get like a real time look at what this looks like, we can tap done, or you can just flick the flip book down, just grab it and flick it down. And now you see our frames, I'm gonna zoom in. I'll do three fingers 
horizontally and we can see all of our frames here. And we can also just kind of scrub through that or we can hit play. And you can see our fun little lines bursting out. Now, I think it would be really cool if we repeated this animation and I don't really want to have to draw all of that again as we go throughout the timeline. So next, I am really excited to talk to you about using groups in Procreate Dreams because you can do so much awesome stuff with groups. So let's go ahead and we'll exit out of draw and paint mode and we're gonna go to this symbol, which is our timeline edit mode. You can tap that. And now if you were to draw anywhere on your timeline, you'll see this really cool kind of like light up line. I really like the way this looks, but you use that line to select um, pieces of content. So you can just kind of like draw a line over it to select. You can draw another line over it to deselect. Um, you can draw a line over some, you know, you can kind of pick and choose. You can hit clear if you want to deselect everything up here. Um, but let's go ahead and select all these frames. So just kind of draw over them. And then you're going to tap and hold. And you're going to choose group here from the popover menu group. And now you can see all those frames become a single uh, piece of content. But if you were to tap this little carrot here, you can see that all of our frames are still inside. So let's go ahead and close that for now. And now that they're a group, we can duplicate this. So let's tap and hold and we can choose duplicate. And now we can play that and we can see that it does it twice. I think it would be nice if there was a little pause in between the two. So I'm gonna zoom out a little and then just tap, hold, and just drag that over a little bit. I still think it probably could move over a little bit. So now I'm kind of just getting my timing and how I kind of want it to look. Cool, I think that looks pretty good. So now I can duplicate it again and kind of move it over roughly about the same kind of gap in between and keep doing that. Duplicate, move it over, tap and hold, duplicate, move it over. And if I zoom all the way out, I still, I still have a long ways to go. So I'm gonna speed things up even more with groups. I'm gonna group all these together and then duplicate that. And that will just kind of make things go a lot faster. So I'm still in my edit mode. So I'm going to select all of these so that they're all selected. And then I'm gonna tap and hold and choose group. So now I have a group within my group <laughs> and I'm gonna duplicate my group. So I'm gonna tap and hold and duplicate. I still need a little bit of a little bit of a gap in between those two, but I think that's probably about right. And now it'll be much easier to just duplicate this one and drag it over a little bit. And I think just one more time, duplicate. And it's okay for it to kind of go off the end of your the movie duration. So now we can go back and we have that same animation. We just had to draw it one time, but we can repeat it across the entire length of the movie. But wait, there's more cool ways to use group besides just like duplicating things. Let's go ahead and select all of these groups and the track with the orange face. So we'll just kind of draw a circle around everything. And so now we've got all of those selected. We're gonna tap and choose group, tap and hold, choose group. And now we've got all of that all in one group and we can actually animate this entire group. So I like to think of groups as an envelope and there's like stuff happening and animating and moving. Um, and then you put all that stuff in the envelope. It's still all moving around in there, but then you can also move the envelope and like everything's kind of like moving within itself. Um, so groups are very, very powerful and I use them all the time um, to animate and procreate dreams. So now that you've learned the three ways to animate and procreate dreams, go ahead and just use whichever method you want to animate this group. So if you wanna use perform, you can tap little perform symbol and you can you know, wiggle it around, you can move it like that. Um, you can tap this corner and you can rotate it. We're still performing. Um, you could do manual keyframing if you wanted to put keyframes in there. Uh, we can grab the corner and scale it up and down, move whatever you want. 
So just kind of have fun. Oh, let me go back and forth. That's kind of fun. Um, so just do whatever you want to animate your group. And you'll see that not only are the rays going out, but all those other animations are also happening too. So it's really, really cool. So let's go ahead and pause and let's do one manual keyframe. So we're gonna tap out of our perform mode. So just get out of the perform mode and then scroll to the end of the timeline, tap the playhead and let's just filter this time and we'll do the HSB filter. We'll do some fun color changing. Um, let's move this all the way to the right for this keyframe and then we'll go to the first keyframe here, right there. And we're gonna move it all the way to the left. So now it'll go through all those colors as it goes across the timeline. There it goes. And let's go in a full screen view. So take four fingers and tap. You can also go back to the beginning and watch it again, hit play. Remember you can also scrub through and watch your movie. There's all kinds of fun stuff happening in this animation. Go ahead and hit back. And the last thing that I'm gonna show you in this video is how to export your animation, because of course I'm sure you might wanna share it. So to do that, we're gonna tap the name of the movie right here in the toolbar. And then you're gonna to go to share, and we have some different options for sharing here. Um, but let's go to video and we'll choose best quality. And then you can do whatever you want with it. I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my camera roll. And now if I go into my camera roll, there's my animation right there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope now you feel ready to start diving into the world of animation in Procreate Dreams. And we've just scratched the surface of what is possible with this app. There is so much more to explore. In my course, Getting Started with Procreate Dreams, Animation for Everyone, available on Artmakers Club and on Skillshare, you'll delve deep into the Procreate Dreams universe. You'll learn more fun techniques like animating over video, importing audio like music and sound effects, and creating a whole host of fun movements like looking, blinking, swaying, falling, flying, driving, and so much more. I'll guide you through a bunch of hands-on projects, provide you with ready-to-animate templates, and give you insights about animating your past Procreate artwork. Whether you're a curious beginner or a seasoned animator, you'll walk away from the course ready to work magic and Procreate dreams. You'll find a link to the course in the description below. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot, and I help people find their creativity through drawing and animating on the iPad. If you want to support me while taking your learning to the next level, you should join Artmakers Club. Artmakers Club is a joy-filled creative community and learning hub for digital art makers. As a member, you'll get access to a growing library of in-depth courses, live virtual events and tutorials, free Procreate brushes, and more. In our community clubhouse, you get to connect with like-minded learning artists, share your work, ask for feedback, participate in discussions, and so much more. Come join us in the club. You can learn more at artmakersclub.com. If you're sharing your animation work online, I would love to see it. Be sure to tag me at Lisa Bardot or at Bardot Brush, and I can't wait to see your creations. Happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day.